everyone welcome back to my class this is Ruman Ali I hope you all are fine in today's class we are going to deal with the lesson living and non-living this is the last lesson of our syllabus so in this lesson we are going to see that the things which are present in our environment all the things can be categorized into two types and they are living things and non-living things based on some characteristics so based on some characteristics of the different things we can classify them into two main types they are living things and non-living things you might have studied about living and non-living things in your lower studies or in your lower classes as well but here in this chapter, we will be learning about the characteristic features that are going to be uh, that are shown by the different living organisms. So the living things share some common characteristics and that characteristics include breathing, excretion, taking food, movement, growth and giving birth to young ones. So these are all characteristics features of the living things so the things that possesses these all characteristics they can be termed as living things and the living in this and here we can take an example of animals plants human beings microorganisms all these are termed as living things because these all shares the common characteristics like breathing, excretion, taking food, movement, growth, reproduction. All these are the processes that are going to be takes place in the body of these organisms. That is the reason we can term these things as living things. And the things which do not possess all these characteristics, they are called as non-living things. So the things which do not possess any of these characteristics, which do not show any of these characteristics that can be seen in the living things, they are termed as non-living things. For example, table. Table is a non-living thing because it do not breathe, it do not take food, it do not reproduce, it do not move from one place to another place. That means it doesn't show any movement. So in this way, this table is not showing any of these characteristics that is the reason why we term the stable as non-living thing so anything which do not possess all these characteristics we can call them as non-living things in the non-living things we can take more examples like pencil pen board marker all these are the non-living things because they do not move from one place to another place they do not grow they do not take food and even they do not excrete anything out because of this we can term these things as non-living things this is how we can classify it, the different things that are present in our surrounding into two things that are this is the reason why we can classify so based on the characteristic features we can classify the different things that are present in our surroundings as living thing or non-living thing now let us discuss about the characteristics of plants so the characteristics of plants include movements food growth breath excretion giving birth and response to stimulus when we study or when we see all these characteristic uh, characteristics of plants then the plant will it be a living thing or a non-living thing based on the characteristics we can categorize into living or non-living thing so by looking at these characteristics we can term the plant as a living thing just before we have discussed the characteristic features of all the living things so in that features we have seen that movements or taking uh, the food in the growth excretion breathing all these are the characteristics or all these are the processes that takes place in the living body in the living organism so based on these characteristics we can call the plant as a living thing so let us discuss about each characteristic feature of plant in detail movements means moving from one place to another place so have you seen plant moving from one place to another place no 
the plant doesn't move from one place to another place but we can see the seed dispersion in spite of sowing the seeds with our hands sometimes the seed through wind or through uh, water they move from one place to another place they show some movements and they reaches some other place and when that seed reaches other place when they get sowed into the soil naturally at the time the seed germinates and it grows into a plant so in this way seed dispersion takes place so the movement in plant it doesn't means that plant move from one place to another place it doesn't move but the seed dispersion takes place besides seed dispersion there are other movements that can be seen in the plants like closing and opening of stomata and even flowers in some plants closing and opening of the flowers takes place and even the stomata stomata is nothing but the tiny pores that are present on the leaf surface that also closes and opens in this way the different movements can be observed in the plants also so by this characteristic feature of the plant we can call the plant as a living thing the next one is food so how we eat the food with our hands have you seen the plant is also eating food with the leaves or with some other parts no they will not eat the food but they prepare the food and they use that food in the various metabolic activities so how they prepare the food by using the different things they use sunlight water carbon dioxide so these are the essential requirements for the preparation of food and the preparation of food the process by which the plants prepare their own food by using sunlight water and carbon dioxide that process is called as photosynthesis so photosynthesis is a process by which the plants prepare their own food and they use that food in carrying out the various metabolic activities in this way the plants are the living things the next one is growth so when you sow the seed the seed germinates into a small plant and when you water that plant take care of that plant in a proper manner then that small plant will turns into a bigger one and it can become a larger tree so how it is happening it is due to the growth of the plant the plant also shows the growth this is also one of the characteristic features that can be seen in the different plants so when you see the plant it increases in height it also increases in width so the increase in the height and width is due to the presence of some tissues in their body and that tissues are continuously dividing so the tissues that are present in the body of a plant as they are dividing continuously they are adding up the cells when the cells are added up in the plant body automatically the height or the width of the plant gets increases and they show the growth in this way the growth of the plant takes place the next one is breathing process so any plant is having a part called lungs and nose to breathe no they are having some special parts so that special part is called as stomata just before i told you that closing and opening of the stomata takes place so why it is happening why the stomata is closing and opening and firstly what do you mean by stomata stomata are the tiny pores that are found on the leaf surface through these tiny pores the gaseous exchange takes place that process is called as breathing in this way stomata plays a major role in the process called respiration that is in the breathing process the next one is excretion so how the excretion takes place in the plants how it is possible so yes it is possible in the plants as well as the plants excrete out the waste material in the form of gum and resins so excretion is a process that takes place in the plants also and they excrete the material in the form of gum and resins the next one is giving birth so giving birth to young ones that process is called as reproduction how a human give birth to a young baby likewise the plant will also responsible to produce a new one how it is happening it is because of the seed germination when you take the seed out from a fruit when you sow that seed the seed it undergoes some divisions 
and it germinates and the seed germination will produces a new plant so the seed germination is a way by which the plants produces new ones and hence they also involve in the process called reproduction the next one is response to stimulus how they are responding towards the different things that are present in their surrounding so here we can take an example of touch me not plant when you touch the leaves of touch me not plant you might have observed that it closes the leaves gets closes then after some time it comes back to their own position so this is happening because of the response shown by the plant and even some flowers they do open in the presence of sunlight but they closes in the night time so this is a response towards sunlight during winter some plants shed their leaves or the flowers this is also a response and this response is because of the change in the temperature this response shown by the plant is due to the fluctuations that occur in the temperature so in this way the plant shows the response towards touch they also shows the response towards sunlight and even towards the temperature uh, this is how the different characteristics are shown by the plant and based on these characteristics we can classify the plant or we can call the plant as a living thing the characteristics of plants involve movement it shows the different movements like closing and opening of the flowers and seed dispersion it also takes up the food how it is taking food it is preparing its own food and that process is called as photosynthesis and in the photosynthesis process they are using sunlight water and carbon dioxide to prepare their own food growth they also shows the growth the plant also shows the growth they increases in height and width due to the presence of some specialized tissues in their body parts breathing is a process that can be seen in the plants they also breathe so they breathe through some tiny pores which are called as stomata and they also excrete out the waste material in the form of gum and resins and seed germination is a way by which they produces young or new ones and they also respond towards the different stimulus that means towards touch towards sunlight and towards temperature in this way these are some of the characteristics shown by the different plants based on these characteristics we can regard the plants as the living things so just before we have discussed the different characteristics shown by the plants now let us talk about the microorganisms in the beginning i already told you that living things includes plants animals human beings and microorganisms also microorganisms are the minute very tiny living organisms they also share some of the similar characteristic with that of the other living organisms that is the reason they are also included in the living organisms we cannot see the microorganisms through our naked eye to see the microorganisms we need an instrument which is called as microscope and microorganisms includes the different small and the tiny organisms like bacteria and mold these two are the common examples that we take under the microorganisms to see the microorganisms or to observe the microorganisms we need an instrument and that instrument is called as microscope so first we'll discuss the different parts the microscope is composed of basically it is composed of structural components and visual components structural components includes body arm and base so body arm and base these are the three parts of the microscope that forms the structural components and visual components are the components that helps us to visualize the minute or the small structures under the magnifying under the microscope by using the magnifying lens which makes up the smaller objects looks bigger when you see the minute or the smaller size objects under the microscope then you can see them in a bigger size we can visualize that objects in a bigger size so visual components include eyepiece nose piece lenses stage adjustment knobs by adjusting these knobs 
we can make the image more clear that can be seen through the microscope so eyepiece is a part from where we can observe the different things that are placed on the stage stage is a part where we place the specimen or where we place the thing that we need to observe so here the thing is kept and by adjusting the lenses and the knobs we can make the image more clear to our eyes we can see them in a bigger size so in this way microscope is an instrument that is used to visualize the microorganisms and it is basically composed of structural components and visual components that we have discussed now bacteria and mole are the two microorganisms first we'll talk about bacteria bacteria are the microorganisms that are useful and are harmful to the living things or to the human beings how it is useful so you might have seen the conversion of milk into curd how it is happening how the milk is getting converted into curd so this is because of the presence of bacteria bacteria is only the microorganism that is helping to convert the milk into curd this is the way it is useful but it is also harmful to us when you suffer from disease this is due to the inhalation of bacteria inhalation of the microorganisms when the microorganisms enter into your body they affect the different organs and because of which you may suffer from the different diseases so the different diseases can be caused by the different microorganisms molds are also the microorganisms and they show a characteristic feature like growth they grow so because of this characteristic feature they are termed as living organisms mold is a fungi when you take a bread slice and when this bread slice is placed for 2 to 3 days at any place then these fungi mold will grow onto this bread you can find the spoilage of this bread so the bread gets spoiled due to the accumulation of mold on the bread slice in this way some of the microorganisms are useful and some may harmful to us so this is how the bacteria and mold shows the characteristic features of the living things and that is the reason why we term these microorganisms as living things so in this lesson living and non living we have discussed about the different living things the different characteristic features shown by the living things and also about the non living thing we have discussed about the characteristics shown by the plants and we have also discussed about the microorganisms which are tiny living organisms that can be seen through microscope and we have also discussed about the different components that forms the structure of a microscope so here the lesson living and non living ends that's all for today thank you